Okay, now that we have this sky mask, I can show you another cool trick for fixing any ghosting issues that you have inside Photoshop. So if you create an HDR from multiple exposures, chances are that if you have some wind or any other kind of movement that you get something like this, that I, as I've shown you, those twigs, those tree tops here that have moved and that are uh, present in the image multiple times, which we call ghost ghosting. Okay. So how do you fix that? <coughs> now, the first thing that I'm doing is I'm going to invert that sky mask, okay? By, by uh, clicking on the mask icon and pressing Control or Command I on my keyboard, white becomes black, black and black becomes white, okay? So now I'm revealing the foreground. Um, and the next thing I'm doing is I'm creating a new layer inside that group, okay? I'm doing this because now I want to use the, cl the clone stamp to fill in those areas with stuff that you have down here in those trees. Okay, L let me just show you what I mean. I select the clone stamp, I make sure that I sample all layers, and I make sure that the aligned is, uh, is not ticked. Uh, what that means is when I uh, clone something, and then I, l I let go of the brush and move to another region, it's still going to sample from the same area where that I sampled initially, okay? That's what aligned means. Otherwise, the sampling would move with the brush that I'm using. Okay, so I have this empty layer here. I have the clone, clone tool, the clone stamp selected. Flow value, somewhat beneath 50%, all layers and aligned, not ticked. And with that, I'm going to go over that the inside of that tree stuff here. I'm going to sample some area and I'm going to paint on my new layer. And you can see that since we have that, that mask on the group, it's only going to affect those areas where the mask is white. So I'm essentially painting in new tree tops exactly in those places where, the, where they are in the single exposure that I've used to create the mask. Okay? So, we now have, let me resample here and fix those issues. We now have new tree tops. Now the other ones, the old ones, are still looking, uh, shining through. So we still have ghosting, but we're going to fix that in a second. But just let me show you, when I disable that mask, it's going to be a big mess, okay? That's what I've cloned in on that new layer here from all the other layers below. But if I enable the mask, it's, it's going to be as if it's a part of the tree. Now, it's still a little bit too much in saturation, so I'm going to um, pick that layer here, that, that layer with the clone stamp tool on it. I'm just going to lower the opacity a little bit so that it blends in with the rest of the tree a little bit better. Now the next thing that I'm doing is I'm going to use the same mask to get rid of the ghosts that we still have in that image. So how do I get rid of those ghosts? The first thing I do is I create a new group and I'm copying that mask onto that new group, holding down the Alt or Option key, clicking and dragging that mask onto the new group, I get a copy. And this time I'm going to invert it again so I get the original mask that I had after using the channels layer here. Next thing I'm doing is I'm using this single image layer here and I'm making a copy of it. And the way I'm doing this is not j just by hitting Control J because if you do that on a smart object layer, any adjustment that you apply to one of those layers is going to be um, copied to the other one because they are still linked. Okay, that's not what you want to do. What I want to do right now here is right click and say new smart object via copy. That creates a copy of this layer, as you see here. Let me just make this a little bit bigger here. A totally independent copy of that layer. And I'm going to drag that into our new group. The image is going to start looking strange because now the sky of the new uh, layer is shining through. Um, I'm going to fix that in a second, but before that, my the, the idea here is that I want to blend in parts of the sky from that single image layer that I've just created to cover the ghosting, okay? To cover those ghosts that we have on the HDR image layer. But to do this, 
as you see when i when i uncheck this the the tones uh, of those skies are different so the hdr sky is much brighter this sky is much darker more muddy and i can fix that by just double clicking and that's the, the beauty of the smart objects i now have the uh, adjustments I, have, I haven't dialed any adjustments in yet in Lightroom, but if I had, those would be visible right now. And I'm just going to make that sky a little bit brighter, bring down the highlights. Try to match what you have in the, uh, in the HDR layer. And again, you don't need to be precise here because it's a smart object. You can go in at any time and change those exact uh, settings that you have right now. Okay, so let me try if that works better. So Adobe Camera Raw, which was the, the software I was in right now, now applies those changes to the, to the image layer. And now it's a little bit too bright actually, so I'm going to go in again. Tone it down just a little bit. Click OK again to see if that matches. I'm trying to match them just about so that they have the same kind of tonal uh, look. And I think we're doing fine now. So now I have a layer that I can use and blend in where those ghosts are. And to do that, I'm going to create another layer on that image layer here and make it black. So now Right now, nothing of that new sky layer is visible. It's got a black layer mask, it's totally invisible. And the ghosts came back here, as you see. And all I need to do now is to choose the brush tool, um, make my foreground white again, use a very low flow value as I did before, click on that layer mask so that I brush on the layer mask, actually not on the image, and then Gently brush on those parts where we have the ghosting. And you can see that magically they disappear. So all I'm doing is right now I'm, is I'm covering up those ghosts with another image layer so that they're not visible anymore. I brushed in new treetops, so to speak, new twigs, and now I'm removing the ghosts. You can also go back here Choose the clone stamp tool again and fix anything that you see. I haven't, those still looked like ghosts to me, so I'm just brushing in to make it more believable. And in that way, you see that I've just created a new part of the tree which has absolutely no ghosting, okay? By using a sky mask uh, of the sky and then an inverted one, the clone stamp tool to paint in a new kind of tree using that mask and a single image layer from the original exposures with a sky that has about the same tonal uh, value of the, of the HDR sky, I was able to blend in uh, a new, uh, new tree tops and remove the ghosts, which is kind of a neat trick, I think.